All right, welcome everybody. I hope you're having a, a fantastic day, evening. I hope you've all enjoyed the Seller Cup over the weekend. We are live. This is the Black and White Show. Uh, we are back after a, a two-week break because I was in the good old USA. You might have seen this man to me, to your left, your right. I don't know which way we're set up. Uh, Adam was out there as well. Um, so we've got Adam P on the show. Good to have you, Adam. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Lee. Uh, I don't know about you, I'm still a little jet-lagged. I'm, I'm just about there now. I'm still feeling it a bit, but I think one or two more lines, I should be all good. I think the weekend kind of knocked me out again. It was like, oh, yeah, it's another slog. Uh, we've got Andrew, our one of our new members. How are you doing, pal? I'm all good. Just about recovering from Saturday's uh, hangover. I was at a wedding, so I've <laughs> been a bit ropey the last two days. Are you, do you remember much about it? Uh, apparently, I got on quite well with everyone. It was Wallace's mate's wedding, so the first time meeting everyone, but apparently I, I went down a storm, so can't complain. You, you behaved then, basically. Yeah, basically, I think. <laughs> unlike, unlike Adam Phillips, who who will be on the show later. <laughs> um, but yes, welcome everybody. We are live on Twitch. We're live on YouTube. This is the Black and White Show. You can see your number on screen. Uh, you can WhatsApp us on the bottom of your screen, and you can also send an email. But tonight, we're just focused on, on the WhatsApp stuff. Uh, because I, we don't have the emails open basically tonight. So WhatsApp us, we'll read your messages halfway through if you've got any questions for Adam as well. Well, so having these are a perfect opportunity for you and halfway through we'll be kicking Andrew off and bringing in another Adam P. Did you know there's two of them? There's two Adam P's kicking about. Could be a war gun on. Could be a war gun on. Who's, who's the original? Uh, but yeah, so we'll uh, read out more WhatsApp later on, uh, later on in the show as well. But I'm going to come to our first topic tonight, uh, which was the, the ballot which caused massive controversy, uh, of course, as well. Um, Adam, how did how how can we make this... Is it fair? Well, I think the ballot system is fairer than what it was last season. I think the membership process, the way it worked, you pay £30. And the majority of people were able to just completely take the mick out of the actual system at the cast. I think people were able to take opportunities where they're, they're going on dead early. Even though a set of bottle cans, for example, people just knew how to get the home tickets before anyone else. It wasn't really a fair system would have said, for example, let's say you're working during the day. You have to be on at 10 o'clock. If you're not on at 10 o'clock, you quite simply don't get tickets. So that was one thing. Um, this season, straight away, um, it, obviously it's, it's a game of chance. It's, it's PR luck whether you get a ticket or not. Now, the cast and I have rectified this since, but the original claim was, well, you get a ticket anywhere in the stadium. That was the big issue straight away. A lot of people didn't like that. And I had to say, I do agree with it. And the cast are within the space for 24 hours to decide to make sure it's categorised. So you're going in for the exact ticket you want to pay for. I think especially in a cost of living crisis, the difference between the tickets of about £30 difference is quite a lot for some people. So that was one thing the cast have got right. I actually think with the... I'm sure we're going to talk about it in a bit, but I actually think the away ticket structure works quite well so far. I'm sure you're going to mention that shortly. But honestly, uh, for what I've seen at the minute from the first game against Aston Villa, I'm a season ticket holder, so it doesn't personally affect me. But I do think the cast that have seemed to have so far got it right. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the first time I've been able to go to for membership. Now I'm not working every weekend. Um, and I've managed to get a ticket. I thought I'd go for bar. 1892 because I thought there might just be that slightly bit more of a chance to to get a ticket there, so that came through today. Um, but yeah, stressful. Um, and then I had 68 quid come out of my bank twice, which I wasn't a massive fan of. Uh, oh, so I don't know how what's happened there. And then obviously there's been loads of financial bother at the ground at the Seller Cup as well with the the cards not working. So I think it all just seems to be a work in progress, and they're just trialing what's what works, what doesn't at the minute. And have you got your extra 68 quid back? Yes. So it, it's weird because both transactions came up as pending. So I was like, all oh, right, that's all right. Like one will one will go through, they'll cancel the other. But they've both count, been counted through. And then I've gotten a 68, like, 68 quid refund straight back through. So I don't know what's happened there. Mm. It, 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 it did cause a massive upset because really probably, Adam, this is... The first bit of criticism that the owners have really had since the synth have came in, because there was a lot of angry people saying, "Well, why should I pay six yard quid for a Premier League game against Aston Villa, where I can get a Champions League ticket against I don't know Real Madrid for fifty five quid?" Um, and obviously, you mentioned the rectified that straight. Well, effectively, the next working day wasn't it, which uh, everybody can see on the screen what the statement was. Um, you mentioned. The
Can you hear us, Adam? I can hear your phone now. It's just when you actually put the image on, I can't hear you whatsoever. Oh, I was just basically asking you about the... So do you know the uh, the ballot? Um, and then yes. the, the, away, the away tickets as well. What were your thoughts on keeping some of them behind? Because you say it was a positive thing. Oh, well, um, well, it's, I can see both sides. But I think people are going to argue and go, well, actually, the Newcastle fans that are going every away match, they should be priority. No one else should be allowed to go. But no matter what happens, no matter what Newcastle United does, people will abuse the system. People will go out with their way. For example, let's say you can't go to a match. You've got 100-plus loyalty points. They're going to make sure somebody else gets a loyalty point. So they'll just sell the tickets on. And no matter what the club does, people are always going to abuse the system. So I think with the actual ballot system, I mean, I've seen Manchester City tickets come out. I still think there's a good amount of tickets that have came out of the fans. Is there even that many in the ballot? It's like 100, 200 or something. That doesn't feel like any difference whatsoever from what I've seen online. Uh, so it's an opportunity now for fans that don't get to go to games to get that opportunity to start gradually building points. But no matter what the club does, people are always going to miss that. That's the problem. The majority of way to get 2,000 or 3,000 fans when there's tens of thousands of fans wanting to go away again. The club just simply can't do it. And honestly, the actual... Um, the online ticket bit, um, I haven't had a chance to see it in the way game yet, but the Man City ones, actually some of the tickets are e-tickets, so the people that are trying to sell tickets on, they aren't going to buy the e-tickets, so the points will gradually drop. So, for example, when it gets to my point allocation, I can buy an e-ticket now. And long term, for example, you go to a game like Manchester United, where every single ticket is an e-ticket, the points will gradually drop because, well, people can't sell the tickets on whatsoever. So I think long term, it is actually good. I think it will... St- start to steadily balance the points and where people are going to be trying to sell tickets on. Some of them will get caught out there, get the soon tickets revoked and it'll just be a bit of a natural cycle. Well, eventually, I think it will balance out for fans. It's, uh, it's going to be patient. You've got to wait a long time for it. But honestly, um, I need to see it first hand in person how it would work in a way again. But I think the club is actually doing some quite good with that. And I think gradually over the next couple of seasons, I think it will benefit fans that haven't had a chance to go to a way again. And Andrew, you, obviously the the ticket out and trying to sell them on and the whole mind away it happens and obviously this will it won't stop it but it'll slow the process down and which Adam's mentioned will allow people who are on like I don't know 20, 30, 40 points to gradually increase because the people who aren't at games who are sitting on I don't know 140 points, 120 points, 100 points can't sell it on or the risk of selling it on because there is talk and I, I don't know whether it's a thing whether just the club are just saying look we are you know, you can lose your season ticket holder, season ticket if you're actually found guilty. Is that a scare tactic? Or do you think it's just trying to scare us, or do you think it'll actually go on and force that all the way through the season? Well, it's how they're going to police it. Like, I, I don't understand because obviously every ground's got their own stewards, unless we're going to start taking undercover, <laughs> undercover stewards in with the away sections and checking tickets. I, I, I really don't understand how it's going to be policed. Um, I think like e tickets, you can just still pass them on quite easily by Ford and emails on and stuff like that but if they do start start checking it and ticket touts get caught out and I mean fair enough if it's people that are season ticket holders can't get to the game like legit reasons but when you've got people that are just buying the tickets to like help the prices up they're the ones you like do want to get caught out and it's well half the reason so much of the ticketing has changed for the season. It is. It's interesting how it's going to happen. But you know the as I say with the rectified it very very quick Adam they didn't hang about and the and it's you know We've been doing YouTube since how many years? Eight years or something, the two of us. And obviously we've um, done videos plenty of times where Mike Ashley doesn't listen to us and you know Lee Charney doesn't do that and whatever. But um, they rectified the problem. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but at least it's better. Well, yeah, the club will listen to the fans, the amount of backlash they've got. I think since the takeover, it's definitely the thing that's caused the most backlash. I think thousands of fans. I would actually say the large majority of fans would disagree with the cast needs approach to the ticketing system so the fact that the clubs then looked at it but you know what well the fans have said this we kind of agree with them so now we're going to do our own part of this solution and uh, that's what it's about it's a good balance between the club and the fans even though the club thinks they've done something right all of a sudden the fans disagree with that we've got that position of power now where we as the fans can actually well go you know what no we're not happy with that can you please change it and the club will listen to the fans it's just that that clout here between the two that we never had before even before the tickets came out, the club had personal meetings at St James's Park that had open phones, so fans would go inside and explain their reason or their displeasure with the club, and the club would actually go away and jot it all down, and eventually they'll come out with a process they think's good enough for the fans to listen to fan feedback, which is something that the club's never done under the previous ownership. So it's something that's good. I think it's a healthy relationship to have, and it's something that over the next few years will 
get stronger, we'll grow more. And I think Newcastle, for now, have done a good job. It's still going to have to be a test of time where we see how it progresses during the season. But for an actual start of season process in regards to ticking, the, the club has done its best. And I think in a bit of an unwinnable situation where St James Park sells out every single home match in the Premier League, the club has to be able to get around it. And I think so far, they've done a good job of it. It's going to be interesting to see because you can only pass the ticket on, what, 10 times during the season? Um, and obviously, if you'll say it yourself, you know that in America, Adam, there's that they have a an actual a live um, banner, like a live banner that scans your ticket that goes up and down. So whether that comes in eventually, I don't know. But as I say, can you screenshot it and you know get in? Is that another way around it? I think that will probably come in because that was quite clever. What we've seen in America, where it actually just goes up and down and it proves that you're on your phone and your device that that's your ticket. But um, yeah, it was in, it was very it was an interesting thing. So um, let us know, of course, in the comments below. We can see some of your comments coming in. We've got one or two WhatsApps coming in. So remember, I pop your WhatsApp in. You can see the number uh, at the bottom of your screen under enough Adam. Um, so please drop us a WhatsApp. Now I wanted to move on to the next thing. Andrew is expectations. Eddie Howe on the media day mentioned that the expectations have naturally have gone up. And do you think this is now because we hit fourth place? Yes, Al Romian. And I was really surprised by it, said we had to get fourth place. I expected, and I was like, ooh, wait a minute, really? But, you know, I think we exceeded expectations. And now, do you think he'll feel the pressure a little bit that, I ha that he has to either get top four or go form one of the cup competitions once more? Well, I mean, the, the Saudi lot, they demand the best, don't they, really? And this is why what they're doing with their league at the minute, they're, they're buying the best place they possibly can. Um, I think... The expectation will be from from a, certainly the the top of our ownership to match last season's result, and maybe go a bit further, win something. But I think the way we're going uh, in terms of depth, I think we we'll we look like we could manage it. Um, I was worried coming in before the window, but now when you see the likes of Longstaff and Anderson improving as well, and really showing their depth into the midfield in Lewis Miley. We we'll look like we've got depth that we can we can compete throughout the season. So I definitely think the expectations are there. But Eddie knows these these bunch of lads really well now. He knows what they're capable of, and if he's saying that we can deal with expectations, I fully believe him. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly put a picture on screen. That the audio will go quiet for literally ten seconds. But have a look at this quote uh, from Eddie Howe. So that was with um, obviously Keith, uh, not Keith Downey. Keith Downey didn't do the open date with somebody else, wasn't it? Um, I think Keith was just flying back from America. I think um, I think he's had an extra few days out there. But that was obviously um, the picture there with uh, Eddie Howe, just saying that the expectations have risen. Adam, I want to come to you on this as well with the expectations. Do you feel because if you look at the start of the season, it's it's a very difficult start. I know we've had a fantastic preseason. We've we've played six sides who are in Europe, um, who are all high calibre you'll probably say except from the Gator game and we're unbeaten but do you feel like let's just take a, a, a sit back if we don't get off to a great start because it's a very tough start and then come mid-September we've got Champions League football is it a case that wait a minute we could be sitting in mid-table but let's not panic if September when September comes well it is going to be tricky um, I think it's very important for Newcastle to get as many points as possible before the Champions League game start because once that balance comes in I think you've got to remember as well in Newcastle's team, we're quite inexperienced in Champions League. I mean, all in the likes of Kieran Tripp, yeah, I mean, Karius is not even going to be playing. We've got only a handful of players that have actually played Champions League football for. And that balance of being able to play abroad and then come back in a flight and play again a couple of days later, it's something that the club is not expect it's not done before. It just hasn't ever done it. So it's definitely going to be an interesting balance. Uh, we've done well last season in the Premier League. We've got more players in now. But every single our team in the league has also broke their squads up and we have to compete on the highest level of competition in the Champions League and also the Premier League. So it's a difficult balance. I think Newcastle have to get as many points as possible for that Champions League spell we start. And the fact that Newcastle have some hard fixtures coming up. I think it likes to sit your way, brighten away. I mean, those two games are going to be so hard. You've got likes of Liverpool as well, Aston Villa at home. Games that I think Newcastle do have to kick on straight away. We can't afford to even lose just a couple. I think we've got to get as many points as possible. So when that Champions League begins, we've got less pressure on what I would say. I think expectations going at this season, I think probably are somewhat unrealistic. I think people will expect us finishing the top four again, which 
I think with the Champions League matches, bearing in mind as well, the likes of Liverpool and Chelsea would expect to improve from last season. I think for Newcastle, in my honest opinion, I think we can do top seven, top six again. I think they do in any European spot and they'll actually try in the major competition to try and win something. I think that's my personal goal this season. I know the club will probably want to achieve for more. For, I know probably some of you guys watching now probably want to achieve more. But honestly, I think realistically, any European spot and for us to do well in the cup competitions, I think is a good season for Newcastle. It's going to be an interesting start. And you look at the fixtures, we are going to talk about the fixtures a little bit more in depth um, towards the end of the show. But uh, it's interesting because I think the running towards the end looks better on paper for Newcastle, but the start of the season. But, you know, football is not played on paper. So we'll have to see how we uh, get off uh, against Aston Villa, which will come to as well. Um, moving on to a little bit, a little bit of news, the Open Day, and of course, the women's, which was on the first, coming at a really, really bad time for me because I had literally had to go back to work from America. I think, Adam, you were flying. That night, I think, as well. So we weren't there. Um, but one man was, you guys might not hear this clip I used to, but the audience will, is Joe was up at the um, the open day, and uh, this is about 40 seconds long. This is what he said. Black and white, Joe. What's happening? What's happening? So I, the open day on Tuesday, phenomenal. Obviously, we're seeing the fan engagement on the men's side to now see it on the women's side as well is... It's so important. It brings the players closer to the city and closer to the people who they want to see smile, they want to do well for, they want to do proud. So that's good for them. It's a good um, good bit of motivation. And it's great for the city and the fans as well because we get to actually meet the players who are doing We live, breathe and bleed Newcastle. So to be there with the players, watching them train and watching how they're getting ready for these games to make us smile and to make us proud of them. Excellent. Absolutely fantastic. It also opens the doors to more people coming down. I mean, over 2,000 fans there. That's excellent. That's beaten some away attendances last season. Keep that up. Keep the fan engagement. Would love to see a couple more of these open days happen this season. You know, just two or three more. It would be phenomenal. I have loved it. What an experience. Excellent, people. Let's keep it up. How are we the lasses? Yeah, so that was uh, Joe, who was uh, very, very excited about the Open Day as well. Um, I'll, I'll come to you, Adam, in a second. But Andrew, with the women's stuff doing the Open Day, it's the first time really that probably they've been big enough to do it, and, and one, because they've never really been pushed by the club until the takeover, until there's over 2,000 uh, turned up. And uh, yes, a lot of them were kids. And, you know, because a lot of these lasses are like four, five, six, seven, eight year old. And they'll see the likes of Daisy Burt and Katie Barker as heroes. And is it a case of um, that, that they're big enough, one, now? And two, are the following on the men's side of if engagement is so important with the supporters? Well, I mean, especially with trying to build up the, the reputation of the women's game up here because of Ashley shunning it for so many years. Like Events like this are so important, and it's it's nice to see that many people turning up to them as well. And I mean, it'll definitely help with the, the Women's World Cup being on at the minute and seeing how well the Lionesses are done. And that's automatically going to generate more interest for people around here to go, go to the women's games. I know certainly myself, I'm definitely going to try to get more this season uh, than I have previously. So it's it's just nice to see them getting getting the attention they, they really deserve and hopefully they can build on it and keep going up. Yeah, England women struggled a little bit today, didn't they? <laughs> mind, uh, scraping through, but good to see the USA knocked out. Um, but that was good. But Adam, yeah, uh, obviously the women's stuff, obviously we've been pushing it for quite a while now. And I think it's brilliant, me. I, I, I just think it's just... For people that don't go... If I personally feel more connected to to the lasses, then because you're more close, you hear them, you get, you have relationship with them, with them. You have Colin, you've got the staff at Kingston Park, you've got Becky, um, you've got the players as well. Do you think you get a better experience at the match than you would at St James's Park, or is it totally different? Can you not compare the two? I, I don't think it's comparable, to be honest. Um, well, in the sense that you were saying there about the the communication, engaging with the girls, it is a lot better than the men's game because of the fact there's less people going. On a personal level, I know a lot of these girls, even before, played for Newcastle. I went to school with Katie Bog. I've known her the last 12 years or so, and so it's always been a case that I've known a lot of the girls on a personal level. And it's just, um, it's a case where I can just like give her a text message, for example, if I need to ask them anything. It's, it's always been a great relationship. I just think in general, it's good to see from the girls now. I think a lot of people always kind of look at the girls and go, well, you know what? Okay, then you cast an but what does it mean to me? What why should I watch them? But one thing I will always say is that 
if the girls ever do get the Champions League, which we're still quite a long way off, uh, on the financial fair play, we can spend more if they are in the Champions League. So, in the men's game, it heavily benefits us as well if the girls are doing well. Not to mention the fact that the club is just generating money from it. It's uh, it's great to see the open day. I always say um, I didn't get a chance to go. Um, I actually ended up booking my flights on the way back, and then um, the event got announced afterwards. So. I got back in the castle at 4 p.m. The event started too, so I just couldn't get there in time. It's, uh, I mean, it was just bad time, I always say. But honestly, for the 2,000 fans, I sort of had a chance to go see the girls. It was a great experience. I'm pretty sure it was free to go in as well, so you literally just get an e-ticket online and that's it, you get to go. Uh, it was great to see interactions. And um, I mean, even for me, for example, there's eight brand new players that I still don't own that well. So it'll be a great opportunity to go down, meet them and kind of, get used to the squad because it's going to be an interesting season, third tier of English football now. For the first time ever, the girls are full-time, so all year long, they're going to be working their backsides off Funny Castle, and it's going to be great. I think it will show on the pitch the fact they're all full-time. Um, I mean, honestly, just in terms of the, the women's team compared to the men's, they're just incomparable, in my opinion. They're two completely different things. Uh, I think it's incredible. I think the girls will continue to push on, and I just can't wait to see them on Wednesday. I'm going to go on the Sunday game Wednesday, so see I... I shall oh, see I you see there. I've had, I've made the Sunderland fans aware that I'm going there, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see if anyone. Yeah, did you feel a bit dirty up? when you when you had to log into their website and pay them? Because I did. But yeah, Joe, Joe's um in the comments there. He's that's his video. We'll see Joe for a second clip a little bit later. But yeah, good, really good stuff um with the with the women's and it's going really well and um they look a lot more slicker and fitter and technical ability on the weekend was phenomenal. We'll come to that later, but uh, we'll move forward to um. Um, Mr. Liv Ramento, who has been pictured for, well, it was Saturday, really, that he was pictured on. Uh, a, f- a lot of people were taking photos of him. Uh, he, wasn't, he was only literally sat about eight rows along from me, and I didn't even see him. Um, first of all, what do you make of this potential signing, Andrew? It's huge. Um, it, it, it's been a while since we've had some really strong backup to, to Trippier, obviously. Mankiw and Kraft have been in there. I mean, who can forget Kraft who stint when uh, when Trippier had his little spell out, but they, they just aren't good enough anymore. I mean, Mankiw can often sometimes knock like a one-touch ball in. It's all right, but I think Livermento coming in is massive and obviously he's got that versatility to play left and right, but I think he'll predominantly just be covered to Trippier and come in. Hopefully, we'll, the cup games we'll have, hopefully that's against lesser opposition, the first couple. <laughs> you know that you know, the, the, the other Adam <laughs> he wants more here. Yeah. I can see, I can see. Um, no, I think I think it's fantastic for a future signing. So obviously, Trippier's on the other side of his thirties now, um, and we're, we're going to need someone to come in and be up to speed. And I think Livermento can do that quite quickly with all already having some good Premier League experience. I think the only worry is is returning back to. Playing after an ACL injury, some players struggle. Mm. Some pe- some players get on like it's nothing. So, be interesting to see what he's doing once he's uh, got his gloves wet. Yeah, get your WhatsApp questions in about Livermento. Ask us a few questions. Where you think he's going to play? Is he going to be a squad player? Um, can he eventually push Trippier out, which is a big ask? Will he fill over at left back? Will Trippier go over there? So yeah, WhatsApp uh, our number. You'll see it on screen in a second. But um, Adam, how do you, how do you judge the signing then? Where do you where do you stand? Does he does he play one and three? Start one and three? Does he play the cup games? Is it is it this season where he just bides his time and gradually comes in? How how do you see this going? Well, I just think the sign as a whole. I mean, it's a lot of money. I will say you spend well over in the mid thirties to low forties on a guy that I mean you could class as a a back at right. But I mean, honestly, my personal opinion, I've had a chance to think about it, but. I mean, surely this guy is going to potentially be like the, the starting left back in the future. I mean, I think for the money he's spending, he has to be someone that long term is going to start, if not even as soon as a few games time now. But ACL injury is going to play a big part. I think it's definitely a gamble for someone that's had a, a year long injury. I don't know much about him, to be brutally honest. I kind of can't come out and just tick through everything about him because I haven't had a chance to properly watch him. But Eddie Howe, the ownership of clearly interested and we wanted him previously, then it's died down a little bit. All of a sudden, Newcastle went back in and now we've landed, we've landed him from a, a relegated club for, again, around £40 million. It's just so much money. Uh, for me, I think he's someone that actually will start sooner than you think. I don't think he's going to jump in straight away. I think with a lot of our signs, for example, even Bruno, when he first came, he had him on the bench for a few games and he gradually brought him in. But I think with the fact we've got the Champions League, 
when it's the Carabao Cup and it's the FA Cup, I think you will start those games. And performance base, I think you probably will get himself into the squad some more. I still would favour him on the left side. I, I don't think he could possibly start with Trippier anytime soon. I think he's one of them players where he's just undroppable Trippier. He's just that case to score. But I think definitely left back, uh, Dan Byrne, I think he's always a player that a lot of fans will criticise despite the fact that he, he did play over last season and was still finishing the top four. So he has to do something right. But realistically, I think he's probably more likely to start on the left uh, if I had to give an honest kind of perspective on it. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a squad player this season coming up. Um, and then possibly push even further and further because naturally uh, I think Trippier is still elite. I don't think I don't think Trippier has come any down level. I think he's actually I think his game going at Letty has actually improved him defensively. And he's just he stands out. He's Premier League right back of the of the year and in fact of the all everyone's team. So it's a tough one to get into, but I agree if Adam he might move over to the left side. But um it'll see. I think I think it tells me Andrew that Eddie Howe quite clearly doesn't trust his right backs after trip, yeah? No, um, I don't think he does. And I think when you look at the rest of the squad, that's that's quite obvious. And I think once Tino's confirmed, I can see maybe we start pushing to to get players out. And it's, I mean, it is sad to see them go when they've, they've spent like a couple of years at the club. But I think it is time for like Yamanki or possibly Kraft, these, these kind of lads to to look for, for other moves but the problem is under Ashley because we've had no one that knows anyone about football in the top in the top departments that they're on ridiculous wages where they're either going to have to lose at least 10 grand a week to go to a, a club and play regular games or they can just sit on the bench and, and hope they might get a couple of minutes here and there Quick one Adam do you think this deal structured in payments? Um, oh I'm, I'm not actually entirely sure of you I had a chance to look into it um, probably more yes, I would have to say in an answer. I think surely the amount of money Newcastle spent, I think just in the three players alone, he spent about £140 million pounds all around. So there would have to be some structure somewhere. So I probably would say yes, I had to give an honest answer. I do. I think it's the structure. I think ESM getting that full fee. I believe it's a full fee for ESM, whatever the fee may be. It's been branded. It's 23 million. Some of them may be a little bit more. But yeah, uh, we'll look forward to Livermento officially signing. I'll probably imagine that'll be Tuesday, tomorrow, or today, depending on when you're watching this. If you're watching the rerun of this as well. If you are watching us, drop us a like as well. How are we? Like, drop us a like. Come on. We've got Adam P on the show, everybody. <laughs> Adam P, how are we? Adam just came along for the crack, you know. Um, but yeah, drop us a WhatsApp. Uh, you can see it under Adam's screen there. Uh, if you want to fire us a message, we'll be reading them out in the next five to ten minutes or so. Uh, but there was a big premiere this week. Ooh. We missed it, but we have seen the first two episodes now, which is fantastic. But Adam P was there. Adam, just talk to me about, first of all, keeping it hush because it's very hard to, but just being there and seeing like, I, I believe Jimmy Neal just said, no, you're not having a photo of me. I thought, I believe you just ignored everybody. Uh, obviously, there was Amanda. There was the obviously some of the first team were there. Uh, there was kids invited as well. How was that experience? Well, it was brilliant. Um, just on the topic of being hush-hush about it. Uh, even even today, Amazon Prime sent across a massive embargo list. So I'm quite literally not allowed to talk about the first two episodes, but I have seen them. Uh, as for the actual premiere night itself... Um, it was a proper movie experience. You walked along the blue carpet. You got all these celebrities coming. I think uh, George Best's son was there. You just mentioned there, uh, Jimmy Neal. Um, I didn't ask him for a photograph, Percy, but I seen Matty from the Magpie Channel did. I got told no straight away. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> quite, quite a cool. nice person, Jimmy, by the looks of it. But, I mean, honestly, um, for me, it was just great seeing everything. It was great seeing the players come up and interact with the kids. It was great seeing the entire club involved. And, um I think what fans, let's say now uh, someone had to ready to watch the Amazon Prime documentary on Friday. Let's say you had a bunch of questions for what would you want to see Percy in the documentary. I think it answers the fans exactly what they wanted to see. Um, it looks good. Uh, I, I can't really specify what looks good, but it is very good. Trust me, you'll like it. And uh, I, I can't wait to see the third and fourth episodes when they come out in a couple of weeks' time. I think the club... Last season, I'm just glad we've got Champions League. Let's just say we, we finished fifth or sixth and lost the cup final. I wouldn't even watch the thing. So the fact that we've got into the Champions League, we've done what we were supposed to do in the documentary. It's just, uh, yeah, you enjoy it. That's what I'm going to say. But it was an unbelievable experience to be part of the premiere night. Yes, um, Sam has seen it as well. Uh, this morning, Sam's watched that. Uh, Carl's seen it. He's described it as spine tingling. 
So um, you'll have to stay tuned to that. As I say, I kind of I, like I like Adam. We can't really say too much about it, but um, there's a quick picture on screen now. We are Newcastle United. We are one club, which is great. Um, Andrew, we kind of mentioned this a few years ago. It would be great. It would be interesting because obviously we had the whole. It'd be quite interesting to see what happens in in the fly in the wall. Ashley Charney, you know McLaren, you know not not having got his head screwed on, and obviously there's a few. Arsenal, it's fan engagement. It's just just now become the normal. Yeah, uh, if years if we saw cameras around, you know, not like trying to mess around for a Amazon documentary or anything like that, but. When you see like Netflix get involved, I mean, in people who are going to profit off the people like West Brom, <laughs> they're going to make it entertaining somehow. Small documentary, the mini one as well. I think we had one on the on the long journey home, which was and Ashby, uh, Adam. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the fact that he's came in it seemed very doesn't seem like he's as games well. I'm quickly, or, or might be in the range. Of, uh, he needs experience. I think Swansea City is a good move for him now. Funny, he actually watched his first game and he said he played quite well. Um, he's someone that could have got. A couple of assists in the game wasn't for some offside calls. Um, I just think it's a good move for him. I think he needs a championship move. It's a good opportunity for him now to get some consistent game time, to build up some confidence, to build up some experience, and then to come back into battle. Uh, Eddie Howe to try and get into that team. It's just a great opportunity all around. I think he has a squad dip now. It's just starting to properly come out in full force. And I think he has a youth system, despite how bad it's been for so many years. We actually seem to be able to get bags of talent popping out. So... For Ashby, it's a good time to put him out on loan. We see how he does at Swans. It was a good time. We'll bring him back. We might loan him out again. But we just have to see. I think time will tell is probably the, the right answer for that. But honestly, pre-season, he's actually looked decent, in my opinion. Yeah, he looked decent. He scored a goal, didn't he? Up, up, um, up Rangers as well. So, you know, um, but um, hopefully he gets, and he's already made his debut. So hopefully he gets a lot of first team action. But um, yeah, fantastic for um, Harrison Ashby as well. Um, uh, we are waiting for Mr. Adam Phillips to pop on. So um, Adam, if you're in the in the background of you coming on, um, he has your warning uh, to jump on as well. But um, we'll have a look at what's up. We had one that's just come through just before. Uh, so we shall share. I don't want to share video. I want to share the screen and we'll have a look at look at. Um, we've got a couple coming up here as well. We've got one. Uh, can you guys uh, see that now? I'll put that added on screen. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Cool. I'll just make it full screen for you as well. Um, so Graham has asked. I'll give this one to. Um, I'll come back to you, Adam. Actually, on this, uh, Graham's asked. What do you think of the proposed fan zone area? Will this be a big day out for those who can't get match day tickets? Are you asking me or are you asking me? Adam. Oh, let's say my bad. Um, <laughs> as for the fans, um, I think the club will make quite a big deal out of it now. I uh, only know some some bits and bobs of it so far what the club proposed with its new plans directed to the council. I think well, I mean, on match days, I'm going to try and make as big as possible. They probably will have a little talking for example, maybe a club legend speaking beforehand, or it might be somewhere the club will drive up that engagement. But I think the interesting part for me is that it's meant to be open all week long, so it's not even just on a match day, which I think is going to be good. Um, like during the week, for example, again, club might have meetings, for example, let's say as a fan meeting, we'll want to talk about this part of St James's part to get all the fans at the, and there's new fans and have a little chat for a bit. I just think... Um, Long term, it's going to be good. Uh, I think eventually we will try and expand the Gallagher and onto that land. But for now, having that fan zone there, it's just going to drive engagement up on a match day. They want to get more people involved. They want to get fans ready for it. And um, I mean, I can only say it so much because I, I don't know exactly everything that they're doing with the fan zone. But I think the actual potential of it, the actual plan of it, it is going to be good. Um, I think... I'm not entirely sure the Sky Sports rights, but for, ma for matches that are live on TV anyway, they will be on the fan zone, but for all matches, that I don't know how to go about them. But I think, honestly, for fans that can't attend the matches, it's somewhere you can engage all fans, you can meet all fans. And that's what Newcastle's lacked, I think. I think we lack kind of an area where fans can go. I know we've got our own separate post with an actual official place by Newcastle. We just don't really have that. So it is going to be good. Um, we just have to see when it gets made, really. But around about Christmas time, I think the plan's supposed to come into place. So... It will be fascinating to see first time. I can't wait for this new fan zone. Everything I've heard and seen about it so far sounds quite promising. Yeah, it, it is. It's fantastic. And, and, you know, 
the fan zone. We can't wait for it and see what happens. And obviously the stack and everything. I've got a question for everybody here as well. Uh, who do we all want in the Champions League draw? Uh, Andrew, who would you like? Pops up in front of us. Just a, as a little refresher. But what I want is uh, Benfica, Atletico Madrid and AC Milan. I think there'd be nothing funnier than than taking Botman, taking Tenali, and then going to the San Siro and finishing up taking six points in the Champions League group as well. Who do you want, Adam? Well, I still have to learn the pots, but um, as far as I'm aware, we are Madrid's pot too, aren't they? So I definitely want them. Um, I think Madrid, we've got, we've got to get a Madrid team after singing the Golden Song. I think we have to do that. Uh, for me, I actually want the best of the best. I don't know if people might agree with that or not, but I think when we get back in the Champions League, the last thing I want is a team like Rangers or a team like Benfica. Teams I've already been to, with all due respect, Andrew, I've already been to these grounds before. I want brand new, fresh teams. I mean, even in the early 2000s, teams like Barcelona, Inter Milan, we've had these teams before and fresh, new opposition. Real Madrid's the one I wanted. Uh, I did want PSG before Messi left, but now he's gone. I'm not too fussed about it. But still, low and back me at St. James Park. It will be interesting if he stays there. So, uh, I just want the best teams. Um, as far as I'm aware, um, PSG's pot one, aren't they? so I probably want them. Um, we always pot two, I want them. And AC, are they pot two, pot three? I don't even know anymore. Pot three. Pot three, 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 so, three, yeah. Yeah, I think every Newcastle fan is going to want AC after all the Tenardi and Botman stuff. But the fact they're pot three, I mean, that's a serious team, by the way, in pot three. But definitely one that I do want. Uh, I think AC needs to happen. I think Real Madrid needs to happen. I'd be raging if we get Rangers. <laughs> we've just been at Rangers but oh, I'm don't... talking about sorry like yeah, Villa on. isn't it Villa's waited all this time to be back in Europe as well and now the prospect like, they've got the prospect of just having to go to Edinburgh uh, they've got a, well assuming <laughs> I think it's hard and assuming they get past uh, the team that we're, they're playing there I don't want to get to Edinburgh or, uh, or Glasgow for a Champions League like, I'm with Adam get with Broad get with them bars get with get, get the foot <laughs> and the power yeah. Don't want to be, want to be driving up to a Champions League game. <laughs> Christ Almighty, wouldn't mind driving down if we're in the last uh, quarters and that we can dream and everything as well. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the next one I wanted to talk about um, was uh, if I move down, I've got my list here. Obviously, we talked about that. We'll talk about that. We're just waiting on Adam to come up. Um, was moving into the Seller Cup side of things next. Um, We'll move across um, to uh, the match reaction from Joe. Obviously, you lads will go quiet. Uh, he has Joe's match reaction to NUFC women winning 3-0. Aye, so it was a, a very dominant performance, um, very attacking performance, as I sort of would imagine coming this season. Um, not only that, but 3-0. Oh, uh, back at St. James's Park, that's all we can ask for. Bridget Galloway, Becky Ferguson and Cora Milne Redhead. Lovely to see Galloway getting on the score sheet yet again in this pre-season. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to this season. Strong team. Going against a, a fairly strong team as well. Stronger than what we've won against previously. And we smashed it. <laughs> Easy. Are we the lasses? <laughs> Yeah, so Joe was just literally saying uh, we absolutely smashed um, West Brom as well. Um, Adam, how did you see? First of all, I seen your tweet as well. I want I will bring that up first. Adam's in the background just setting up as well. Um, how did you see NUFC women play in the third game? Because so many fans left, and I was like, shouldn't that have been the second game? Well, yeah, I, I definitely think the women's team on last was always going to set them up to fail somewhat. I mean, the truth is, you're putting them on after and you can't say the main teams play the, the match that everyone's kind of turned up to see. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't the correct call. I think they should have been on earlier. I think it probably would have made more sense to have them on second and then the men's game last. I think some people probably would have argued, well, Adam, I want to get home at a certain time. I don't want the men's game to be on so late. But honestly, for me... um. I think having the women's team on last definitely didn't help them. It was great having back to St James's Park, but ultimately they played in front of a couple of thousand fans, which is, I don't think they're the support that deserved in the day. Now, I know there was all sorts of issues with the card reading machines. For example, some people went, well, Adam, I've got kids today. I've run out of cash in hand. They've got to get some from the bar. There. They're going to be whinging on for hours. I've got to take them home at some points. There's all sorts of different factors. I mean, even me, for example. So after the second game, I left the state and go upload my match reaction. And I came back in for the women's game. And even then, despite the fact that the club said, well, in certain entries you can come back in because of the fact the call machines aren't working. Even then, I had a good 10-minute debate with the Stuart about getting back on the ground, trying to explain, listen, I had to go out and get some cash. I mean, I didn't, but I had to go out and get some cash. I want to go back for the women's game. 
oh, can I do it? It's just it was just non-stop nagging and arguing because these people clearly haven't been taught from the club what to do. So I eventually got back in after being a complete nightmare. So I missed the first 20 minutes from the other 70 that I saw. It was quite promising, especially the second half of the girls. I thought they, they'd give it a real good go. Quite lively as well because West Brom on paper is a pretty good team. So the fact that I thought we were a better team throughout the entire game, eventually I thought West Brom defence would be quite, quite well, but eventually second half we just picked them apart. And uh, it's promising. I think the Sunday game Wednesday is the real test there. I think we will have a competitive game there. I'll be very excited for the season ahead. But just on topic to the fans, I think the club definitely made the wrong call about having the women's game on last. And I think judging by the fact that it was only 36,000 on day one, 34,000 on day two, I think the club should have had the tickets cheaper. Um, I do stand by that. Uh, I would argue that overpriced, even if some people who watch this might not agree. I mean, actions speak louder than words. There was a good, what, 15,000 empty seats. I mean, that def there's definitely a reason for that. So, yeah, I think ultimately the club probably should have had the tickets cheaper, considering it's just a, a friendly weekend. Adam, uh, sorry, not Adam. Andrew, just before we kick you off, yep. do you agree with that? Do you think the tickets should have been just cheaper? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's easy to say it in hindsight. I mean, the club wouldn't have been expecting to have as many problems as they had. I think they probably should kind of offer, I don't know, so, something in return um, with, with the amount of problems they've had over the weekend. I mean, especially with expecting people to stay in a stadium for, for three games of football and not expecting people to like go in and out. And then, like Adam says, I know he said that he made it up, that he had to go out and get some cash, but I can imagine that was the case for a lot of people on that day. So, yeah, I think the next time they should do the do something like that, there should be definitely more family deals, something on the side of that, because that's what these are for at the end of the day, is to get like the kids, families getting the kids to go and see the, the games and stuff. So... Yeah, it'll be nice to see in the future that there's no um, no card problems and I hope there's not any at the weekend. I'll probably take some cash with us to the game this weekend just to make sure <laughs> I can get a pre-match pint. But uh, yeah, apart from that, should I'd imagine they could, uh, they'll sort it out on the back of it. Right, we're going to uh, kick Andrew off. Thank you very much, Andrew, for popping on. Uh, we'll, we'll bring in Adam. There he is. Look at that. Look at that switch. That was smooth. Smooth. Um, smooth. No. The debate. Who is the real Adam P here? Yeah. Well, I've got about 20 followers on Twitter, so <laughs> um, I'm going to have to give it the young lad, to be fair. Well, no, it's nice to meet you, Adam. I think it's the first time we spoke, so that's it. Uh, it's uh, nice to meet you as well. And listen, the followers don't matter, but war equal, and I'm not bigger, better than you in any way, so don't, don't think that way. Oh, no, do uh, say it. Do say it. He, he winds us all up in the WhatsApp, so Adam. Uh, Adam's the now with Black Ali. Adam, yeah, the real yeah. Adam P. Please do slay him because he gives us enough stickers as it is in the, in the, in the uh, WhatsApps. <laughs> it's banter, hashtag banter. So yeah, welcome, Adam. What did what did you make of the? Um, we just talked about the ticket prices there. Do you think it was yeah. fair? Not really. Um, I didn't go personally because of the ticket prices. I think it was 55, 60 pound for a, a day. For two, yeah. So it was sixty pound for the two days, was it? 55, 60 quid, wasn't it for the two? I right. Well. I suppose if you're paying that for two days, it's maybe not that bad. But I think in terms of, you know, I've, uh, friendlies, I'm not a huge fan of the atmosphere, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I just watched them on me stick. You know, I wasn't that fussed about going out. And I appreciate some fans are being frustrated about that. But as Adam said before, I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of empty seats. You know, my priorities Saturday and uh, the Premier League game, you know, I don't miss a Premier League game at home. But yeah, friendlies, just not my cup of tea personally. Yeah, it was a shame to see the tens drop for the lasses. But um, we've got um, about 50 seconds worth of interviews from Becky and our new goal scoring machine. Obviously, you lads might not hear this, but everyone at home can. So be back in 50 seconds. I think our ambitions are back-to-back -back promotion. Um, I think others listening in might think we're quite naive with that because it's our first time in Tier 3 in a long a long time. Um, but the players we've brought in, the staff we've brought in, I've brought Andy in to work with me. Um, that's just given us all a massive boost and there's absolutely no reason why we can't win this league this season. So that will be our ambition. Um, we'll go for it every single game to get those three points and I don't see why we can't achieve it. I bet you can't wait for two a uh, couple of weeks' time when that first game at Kingston Park. I bet you can't wait to see all those fans because it just keeps growing and growing and growing, and it must be such a, a massive buzz and a motivational factor going into this new season. Yeah, definitely. Fans are always um, twelfth player, aren't they? So having the fans back on us is great. Um, it'll be great to see as many as they can get along all our games, home and away, because um, their support will help us win the league this year. 
I think our ambition. So that was Becky Langley and our new goal scoring machine, uh, Bridget Galloway. Uh, so NUFC women absolutely put away West Brom, as Adam was saying. Uh, I'm getting confused, yeah. Adam and Adam, um, getting confused. But yeah, they put them away 3 0. It was second half. We were literally, put, we went up a gear. But I'll come to you, Adam P. Um, did you did you notice that for me, well, I noticed it, they looked a lot more leaner, slicker, technical ability looked a lot more better. Are we already gone up a level? Yeah, I think definitely the way they played. I think, again, as I mentioned before, the opposition was even better than last season. So even before you talk about Newcastle, like women's team, the team we're playing against is much better than what we previously played against. Just the way we move for the ball, it's so smooth. I mean, everything just about, it just feels professional. The fact they are full tight now, they feel ready to go. And um, I mean, the standard's good. I will say that. I think especially when people always look at women's football standing and go, well, you know what, this is rubbish. We can do this, we can do that. But... Honestly, from the match that I saw, the standard is much better than I've ever seen, more or less, any Newcastle like women's game. To be honest, I think the way the players move around, the way the players read the play, it is class. I mean, even players who already had likes of Charlotte Potter for, especially for the offside goal, which got robbed. I mean, they just ran for about three players and just put it over the top for someone. I mean, the, the standard's incredible. I can't wait to see the uh, the season ahead. And I think once again to the Championship or once again to the Women's Super League, the standard's going to be out with this world good. So I think... Um, Fans are going to be treated for what is it five pound a ticket or something now for a game? It's just it's nothing to get there. So if you get a chance to go on a Sunday, I definitely recommend it. It's so good to watch. Yeah, it is. It is fantastic to in Kings of Park. Obviously, they're trying to move up another league, and I think obviously Becky Lang has already talked about the expectations. You know, she wants to go on and go and get um, promotion, which stood out for me because she's come out and said it. So there'll be a little bit of pressure on her to, to try and get that done. But that was the women's side. Um, Adam, do you think the Mr. Phillips, I'll say, I'll call you Phillips. Um, do you think the the weekend was a success in terms of um, in terms of how many games, or can they learn from um, from you know the low attendances? I say low, it's still decent. You know what I mean? Um, the e ticketing as well. That was obviously yeah. first first time bringing a lot of people in. Do you think it was a success? And and do you think also this will now become an annual thing? Yeah, I think in terms of the the event, in terms of the quality of teams we're playing, it's got to be class of success. Um, you look a few years back before the owners came in, some of the pre-season games we had, it was no it was no wonder we started seasons poorly. You know, we'd be playing Doncaster a week before the season started. You're never going to be up to speed with playing top-level Premier League teams when you play poor teams. And let's be honest, we made two decent European teams, <clears throat> although probably not at full strength, nor were we, look pretty average in Florentina and, and Villarreal. You know, Villarreal... Not long won the Europa League, you know, been playing high level in in the Spanish league. So you know they're not, they're not daft teams. Um, so it was good to see us playing a bit better opposition. Um, it's been really well organised in terms of the organisation of it. Obviously, it seems there's been issues with the ticket, and I think as as Andrew what I mentioned earlier, there's always going to be teething problems with any type of change. Stuff like card machines going down, people are having meltdowns on on Twitter, and it, it can happen in this digital age. Unfortunately, it, it's not the club's fault that that can just happen. You've got a lot of people coming through the gates, um, and the learn the owners will, will learn by things like that. Um, the steward, and you know, is a bugbear of mine. It's always been pretty poor at Newcastle, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. Um, fans are unable to get in. You know, there will be people trying to screenshot tickets, pass them on to friends. It will be a bit chaotic, I think, initially. But yeah, in terms of the weekends, yeah, it's it's, it's good progress to see we're playing better teams pre-season. Um, but yeah, I still don't think we got anywhere near the levels I expect of us um, going into Saturday. Let's talk about Saturday. Let's get into football then, Mr. Adam P. Um, 2 0 win. Um, real chance for a lot of fans to see Tonali play for the first time because uh, we've been to Gateshead, Rangers, and across uh, over to the States. Um, grind, would you say it was more. I, I do agree with Mr. Phillips that. Um, we are can't can this both out. I'm getting confused myself. That it was a bit too easy. It made these teams look average. Um, how did you see uh, the first game, and did anybody stand out on the Saturday game for you? Oh, the first one. Um, well, again, I think everyone's been banging on about it already, but Anderson just looks so much better than last season. I think I don't know what's happened to him over the summer, but he just seems to go up a level. He seems to know that he's got an opportunity now to get himself into the team. He's someone that I'm constantly impressed by. He's just so good. Um, he's definitely someone that I think we should keep, keep an eye on. 
I think Gordon as well. Um, I know he's still quite not getting there with his finish. I mean, that chance in the second half, how the hell is he missing for five yards? Though? But honestly, the way he is in the ball, I think the Euros is definitely done in the world. He's going to think once he gets that first goal in this season, I know he scored against Chelsea last season, but I don't really class that goal, to be honest, in the kind of game it was. I think once he gets that first goal, hopefully as early as possible, he can kick on straight away. But I'm sure we'll talk about him shortly, but Harvey Barnes is just uh, good competition for him. I think he's definitely going to push Gordon to his limits as well. And, uh, Isak, I've been banging about him all the time. I mean, you can do, even on a bad day for Isak, he's still going to be levels ahead of what we have. He's, he's such a good individual player, and uh, I think with real technical ability, he probably is Newcastle's best technical player. I would say with the way he is to the ball. I mean, honestly, that guy has no seeing. I can't wait to see him. Um, there's just so many positives to talk about in the team. Again, probably going to mention day two shortly, but even your lesser players, you probably wouldn't expect to do so well. I think. They've done well. I think the likes of Murphy played brilliantly yesterday. The likes of, yeah. like, even a guy like Paul Dummett thought had a good game. Like Players that you wouldn't ever expect to do well. I think now, again, that opportunity to come in and against, yes, maybe pre-season friends, but against teams that have been European level sides before. I think Newcastle have just got everything spot on. I think the squad there is much better than we actually think. Yeah, comfortable 2 0. It was comfortable. I don't think it was a pretty game, to be honest with you. Um, but it, uh, you've mentioned, obviously, uh, a couple of lads, Lewis Miley. I think Alex Murphy's had a good pre season as well. Um, is this the best squad, Phillips, that you've probably seen maybe since? Is this, is this, I'll actually, I'll ask a question. Yeah. Is this squad better than Bobby's? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I do. Um, obviously, the likes of Mr. Mulder will probably correct me on that, but, you know, I was only about 11 or 12 when Bobby had his squad together. But from what I remember and from what I've seen, I literally cannot predict what this starting eleven is going to be on Saturday. Um, maybe the back four I can, but going forward from that, I think it's there's not many Newcastle fans who know who's going to be starting. Um, so, yeah, in terms, in, in terms of depth, especially that midfield when you look, as you mentioned, when you've got, when you've got players like Miley and Anderson stepping up, you'd still like to think they're going to get some game time. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of games. Um, but yeah, there's there's just that much quality in the middle. Um, I mean, I don't think Tonali's going to start the weekend. Um, so every other fan's going to have their own opinion. Um, you know, Joe Willick still not kicked the ball pre-season. There's just so much depth in that squad now. Um, Callum Wilson looking fit. He's, he seemed to have a bit extra burst of pace at the weekend, which he's not usually got. You know, so every player's improving, so he's like game by game, really, under Eddie Howe. So yeah, I think when you turn to squad depth, we're probably up there. We're one of the best in the league, but again, that'll that'll be a test of, of time in the Premier League. You know, the games come thick and fast. It, you will pick up injuries. I think we we're quite fortunate last year. We didn't have a lot of injuries. Maybe ZSM was the main one. We lost Miggy for a while, Wilson, but we kept the core, of the squad majority together. Whereas I think this year, you know, bodies are going to be tested, and the intensity I think is going to be a lot higher. Quick one, um, Adam P. Are you a bit worried? Callum Wilson's only got twelve months left on his deal. Well, I'm not worried in the sense that Newcastle wouldn't offer a new deal. We definitely are going to give him that new deal. It's just a certainty. Even if Wilson was have a bad first half of the season, there's just there's no way that we aren't giving him a contract for the season he's just had. I think my biggest concern with Wilson is is just um, the fact that we only have two strikers. Really, let's say Wilson was to get unfortunately to get injured the first couple of games, but it's like for the entire season. So I definitely still think we uh, ideally probably need to try and get somebody in there, maybe a young striker. I can gradually get better over time. I'm actually one of your concern, but um, I think a lot of people would always call Callum Wilson an injury-prone striker. But to be fair, since the take, he's had one injury, really, which was the uh, the one against Manchester United, which was, to be fair, more of an impact one. I know he had COVID-19 after the World Cup, so he was out for a decent amount of time. But he's not really someone that's picked up any injuries uh, recently, thankfully. So I'm hoping it stays that way. But one bad injury to any striker at the start of the season, I think we're in big trouble. So I definitely think, even though our squad that was the best I've seen in decades. I still think we probably do need to try and get a few more signs in there, whether it's a loan deal, whether it's just uh, trying to use a bit more of the budget because um, I'm a bit worried by the fact we only have two strikers and playing Champions League football now. I, I just got a sneaky feeling one's going to get injured. And then if we do get an injury, who plays up top? Yeah, exactly. We've got one, got one option at that point. So, uh, yeah, we've got to make sure we've got that squad depth sold because if not, we're going to get the kids back in there or you're going to be playing somebody out of position. I just... No, I don't even want to think about it, Lee. I just want to make sure we get that deal done. Yeah, we do. I mean, well, well, well since we're on the topic as well, transfers, uh, Mr. Phillips, do you think how far away are we now, Eddie? How happy? Because Livermore is going to be announced. He's mentioned two on Friday. Is Livermore one of them? 
And then is it one more? And if it is, where is it? Yeah, I think I think as Adam mentions, I, I agree with what Adam says. I think we're, we're kind of hoping that Callum Wilson will stay fit. We're not going to get 38 games out of Callum Wilson. Um, as fit as he may look at the minute, he will pick an injury up and miss probably five or six weeks of the season. He, he's done it for quite a long time. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but yeah. But I do think that we need some cover at centre-half. Um, I think if Shah or Botman go down, Shah's pretend, to be fair, Shah's had quite a fit season. He's done well, but he's always got that potential to miss a few weeks. Lascelles, as much as I love his loyalty to the club, I think he can be really suspect um, for the levels we're trying to be at. Um, Dan Byrne, yes, it can come across, but his pace is... Some centre-forwards in the Premier League will, will cut them apart as well as he reads the game. So I do think there's probably extra cover needed in the centre-half, a bit extra competition. I think Botman and Shaw, as solid as they are, probably know they're going to be starting and that can lead to complacency. Um, so just that bit extra quality at the back. But yeah, I do echo Adam's point that about the centre-forward. But the issue is, and you've seen it in the clip of, of the Amazon Prime, we don't want to be over overspending on a, a third-choice striker and teams will do that to us. Um, they'll, they'll stick an extra 10, 15, 20 million on. We don't want to be paying that for someone who's just going to really be sat on the bench, you know, Chris Wood type players. Um, so, yeah, but it'll be interesting to see. So I think Anthony Gordon's going to have a big season. I think he's going to be the man yeah. that's going to be moved in several of different positions. So I think he will play a lot of football, but then again, he hasn't had a rest either, never as Tonali. So, yeah, we'll come we'll come back to the squad in a minute because I'll ask the lads um, the positions where I think it's up for grabs for next, uh, next Saturday. But moving into the Sunday game, and there's a clip here for about 90 seconds. And one man was on everybody's lips. What do you make of Newcastle's new superstar, Harvey Bonds? Absolutely amazing. What a signing. Do you think Brilliant. he can be better than what Alan Maximum was for Newcastle? I think that Maximum was there when it was really tough for us. And I, I really respect him for that. And he was a talisman under Steve Bruce. But Maximum doesn't fit Eddie Howe's playing style as well as Barnes does. That's why I'm really happy that we've signed him. And he's won us the Seller Cup. I was only going to ask you how good Harvey Barnes is. Oh, he's good. Eh? He's spot on. Is, Van, he, he's is, he, is he better for Newcastle United under Eddie Howe than Alan St. Maxim is? Yes, I think so. Does, does he start next week? Yes, definitely. Definitely start next week. I'm sure you can tell me how good Harvey Barnes is. Oh, he's going to be pull it, isn't he? That's he's brilliant. Do you think his first goal or his second goal was better today? The uh, thing is, that's what we need to that finish. You know, someone, when it's laid on the plate, actually finish it. And that's sort of the second one he did, didn't he? Just literally just slotted it away. Perfect. Does he start next week for you? Definitely. He's got to start. Yeah, yeah. Who's man of the match Who's today? Who's the man of the match today for you? Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes. Yeah. Harvey, isn't Good, it? Answer. Good answer. Good <laughs> answer. Who's man of the match for you? Harvey Barnes. Good answer. Yeah. Right, lads. I want you to tell me how good is Newcastle's new signing, Harvey Barnes. Um, I have, I <laughs> he's really good. Like, um, he's, he's, he's great down the wing. He's nice and direct and he scores loads of goals. Is he better than Alan St. Maxwell? Yeah. Um, I think St. maxwell has got more experience at the club and... Because Harvey Barnes just joined. So that was a lot of the fans meant talking about Harvey Barnes. I mean, Adam P, what a performance in front of St. James's Park. Yeah, definitely. I think that's everything that Newcastle United needed for for years. I can't remember the last two, actually. I had like a dedicated goal scorer out wide. I mean, I don't know who you would class as that. I mean, maybe Solano. I mean, that was just so many years ago. I mean, we actually had someone that could score goals out wide. I mean, I know Sir Maxman, I mean, bless him, I liked him a lot, but he just didn't score goals, really. He didn't get the goals he would need. And I think he's the sort of player, Harvey Barnes, that I think Newcastle, in the games that we drew last season, for example, we just needed somebody to be able to have that moment of spark, somebody that's going to step up and score that goal. And I think it's lack that player at wide. I think Harvey Barnes now, uh, I can't get too carried away when we say that, but his return rate of the last four seasons for Leicester, I think he's always got... 10 plus goals and assists every single season. So it's someone I can get goals at or bad Leicester City team. So you're thinking in a good Newcastle team now, what can he do? And um, he looked alive really in that game yesterday. I mean, even before he scored the first goal, he had a couple of chances he realistically should have scored or a couple of chances that would come close to him. Had a quiet first half. Second half, he was just on every single attack. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. He's definitely a sign that I'm excited to see more of him. I could even argue somewhat. I want to see this guy more than tonight. I just want to see what Harvey Barnes can do. I'm so excited with the, the goals you can get from him. Uh, I think he will still start going on uh, Saturday. But I've, I'm sure once uh, Harvey Barnes comes off the bench, I think that role could switch very quickly. But uh, I really impressed his performance uh, yesterday. 
Yeah, it was fantastic. WhatsApp, we're going to be read out in the next five to ten minutes, so get them in before we wrap up, so get your WhatsApp in, you can see the number on screen, but Phillips, Mr. Phillips, um, Harvey Barnes, he was the star of the show, obviously, um, first time he's played at St. James's Park, and again, we made Villarreal, let's not forget, of European football, they got the final of the Europa League, didn't they? Um, and uh, Unai Emery, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was him. Um, it's, it's, he just ripped the whole team and I think that as I don't know what kind of side Villarreal put out to be honest with you I don't know every single one of them but the second half again for me it, they went up a notch and it was so many counter-attacks and it just looked easy I, I did think Anthony Taylor didn't have a great game man it was too many stop starts for yeah. me it's just a friendly let it play out let it play but we're talking about just before we heard from Johnny there the competition for places then so that's when I want to come on to now then because I think there is we'll, we'll think Fabian Shea should be all right because he only had a knock he just wasn't risked so the back five will be the back five are we all in agreement with that? Yeah I would say so I think Burn will start left back um, you know put the, what, the best defence in the league last year um, I don't really see him, see him changing it until we start making dramatic mistakes So left wing then Mr Phillips who are you playing? It's so tough. It's so tough it's because a good tough though, isn't it? it's a good. Yeah, tough. There's, there's, there's not a wrong answer really. Um, oh, who I'd play, and I, and I prefer him centre, but I honestly think the pair of them have got to start together. Um, so I'd play Isaac on the left. Oh, um, would you? I, I, I said there's no wrong answer. I just think Callum Wilson has to start. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a huge Callum Wilson fan. Um, <laughs> so. I'm a huge Callum Wilson fan. I think if you want to score goals, especially at home at St. James's Park, that Isaac goal last year against Everton kind of sums him up. His assist for Miggy um, the other day, although he was playing central, he still kind of drifted out the left. I would just, I think you need to win games to score goals. You need both of them in the team. Um, but again, there's no wrong answer. You're putting Harvey Barnes or Gordon in there. It's still going to be a dangerous attack. See, I'll go with Barnes. I mean, I was going to say Gordon before the weekend. I, th- I just think confidence-wise... And Adam, I think you're going with Gordon, aren't you? Well, if, if it was me personally, if I was Eddie Howe, I would have picked Harvey Barnes, but I think you will start Anthony Gordon. Um, I know he's like played left wing quite a bit last season. It was class there as well. But I think the fact that we brung Harvey Barnes in now, we oh, you got two straight. I just can't see us starting both of them. Um, I think especially, again, as I mentioned before, with the injuries, I don't think we'll play both of them together at all this season unless it gets to a part where Eddie Howe really wants to get them in there. But I think we'll start Anthony Gordon. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it will start Anthony Gordon, but um, I, I mean, honestly, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been like, yeah, it's been team. I'm, I'm looking forward. We've to seen what you've done there. Uh, you yeah. do it. <laughs> um, I think he needs it. Um, I think he definitely needs. It. I think he needs that confidence coming in. Harvey Barnes. I think we'll start going forward for now. Though you'll play Gordon first. Yeah, it's fantastic. People can see the Salah Cup um, being lifted now and Jacob Murphy absolutely loving life. Uh, once again, me and Adam were out in Saudi and he was doing exactly the same thing. But um, so the two centre midfields, um, Adam Adam Phillips, that is, I'll go to. Do you think it'll be the two Brazilians and plus one? And if who is that other one? Yeah, it's definitely going to be Bruno and, and Jalinton. Um, massive part how we played football last year. The, the, the the aggressiveness of Joel Linton is just, he, he sums our team up, our attitude up. And to be fair, if you can start having goals like he scored against Villarreal the other day, where he's picking that ball up, driving and finishing, you know, who'd have thought that a couple of years ago when he, he couldn't even lace his own boots? So, yeah. Um, and the third one, really, really tough. Um, I'd love to see Anderson give a go, you know, but I just don't think he'll he'll be brought in at such an important game because our Lord's the first game and it's a big game. Um, I think he'll go with long staff. I think he'll go tried and tested and that midfield is going to be so tough against Villa. I think it'll go long stuff. It is. It's these are great healthy competitions, especially when everyone's fit. I'll go Tonali. I think just chuck him in the deep end. Just I get just him don't, in there. I don't. I don't think he's ready. I think. I, I do think he's ready football and wise. I just think it's going to be such a physical game. It, it's, it's going to be really physical. Um, I, think had a, I think he had a better game on Saturday. That's probably his. Maybe with Rangers. Don't, don't the, get us wrong. We've, we've not seen anywhere near what he's capable of. No, doing. not the, yet. The, the, the games you can't really. He was getting some criticism. It's ridiculous. You can't really judge him on on on, on preseason. He, he will come. He will be an absolutely incredible player for Newcastle. I just think in terms of Saturday, I don't think Eddie Howe will chuck him in the deep end. I really don't. I think he'll do what he did with Botman um, and give him a bit of time. He's only been here in the squad what three or four weeks. It's not a long time. 
So, yeah, I do think Longstaff will start Saturday. Mr P, Adam P? Who do you well, reckon? I agree with Adam. I think you will start Sean Longstaff. I think, again, uh, the guys had a class season last year. I think even the last few seasons, once you've got that injury towards the end, do you realise how important he is when he's out the team? I think Newcastle with that midfield area did start to struggle a little bit about Longstaff and uh, thankfully we got the Champions League in the end, but let's see we had an extra couple of games left in the season. We would have really struggled, I think, towards the end. So the fact we got over the line, I think, is good. Um, I think long term, we would expect my start to already show the amount of money he's spent. But again, he's someone that's only just came and he has to adapt to the English game first. It's uh, someone that I don't think is fair to criticise again. Um, I think for the pre season matches, I think it probably goes both ways, even though Howie wants the class game again. We can't get too carried away just yet. I think it's definitely a balance where you need to find in both the, uh, the players that perform well and players that you think can improve. But for now, we'll start showing long stuff. We just have to make sure we're running at this time because last team we played, that's a good idea. We ripped us apart in midfield. So we have to make sure that we're, we're ready for this game. But I think the fact is that's in James' part, I think will heavily benefit us. I think the players will be ready. They'll be excited to go. And um, I fancy it. I fancy it to win. So um, that's the main part for us. But I think you'll start showing long stuff. Gradually over time, you'll probably expect tonight to take its place. Even then, you still got. Joe Willett, when he gets back from his injury, and is an iron mighty. So the depth is crazy good in midfield. I think it's probably the best squad they've ever seen in midfield. Yeah, the centre midfield's brilliant since probably going all the way back to probably even Keegan, going way back then. But yeah, it's fantastic. And then uh, are we all in agreement it's just going to be Mig on the right? Because Murphy yeah. did have a great game at right back and we haven't really touched upon him. I thought he was brilliant at right back, but I think he's filling in because I believe, I might be wrong, I think Mankio's in Spain. So maybe there's some sort of transfer happening we'll have to wait and see on that but um and Miggy then 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 up top obviously Mr Phillips you've already gone with Wilson uh, I'm gonna disagree I think he'll go Isaac <laughs> I think Isaac has to be nailed down as striker not left wing not as a number not in this little 10 behind if we're chasing a game I think he's just got to go out and play as a striker because even on even on Saturday the thing that I like about him he drops deep he picks the ball up and spin it and go yes he's seen signs on the left wing he had about 10 minutes out there where he's brilliant but I get with Wilson, he's got that nounce, he's fox in the box. He's got a bit of muscle on him, he can spin his man. Different type of player, but I think Isaac has to nail this down this season, right? I'm number one, which will probably upset Philip, um, Phillips, which will upset Wilson because he's only got 12 months left on his deal. So it's, it's a very, very crucial season for Callum Wilson, but I'm going to go on Isaac. Um, well, who do you reckon, Adam P? I think you will start as like, I think out of the two, he just is the better striker. Uh, that, this is what you got to judge it on. No, Wilson did score, was it 18 goals last season? Um, I think it's fixture dependent. Um, I don't necessarily think that one striker will always start the other one. I think depending yeah. on who you play, he definitely will rotate the strikers around. But I think it's like has to be your main man. Um, again, I said it before, his ability is next to none. I think he's someone I can really take players on. I think Wilson's probably more of someone that's going to draw fouls. Again, that fox in the box, he'll get in there and he'll. You get a goal out of nothing, but I think it's that quality wise against Aston Villa. I think it's probably the right choice. Is the one I would go with. I think he's going to start Gordon Miggy, and it's like it's a bunch of pace going out, and we'll be tacking non stop for 90 minutes. I think it's going to be a great game of football. Um, we'll see over time, but um, for me, he has to start his like first game. Yeah, Pedro commenting there, he calls Johnny half point because, um, in the score on the players. Johnny never gives a full mark. He always gives a point. So I remember you, Pedro. I remember you. Um, we'll come on to the last one before we start reading out the um, the WhatsApp stuff. Is uh, I talked about it briefly earlier was the uh, the fixture fixtures. Um, the first six games are on Sky in the new branded TNT. And um, as we talked about with um, a couple of Mr. Phillips on this, you haven't really had your say. It's a tough start, mate. Villa, City, Liverpool, Brighton. And then it probably eases off a little bit where you've got starting to go into Brentford, Sheffield United, and Burnley. But those four fixtures, how realistically, how many points are you want from that? It, it is a tough start, but I think our mentality in terms of the dressing room, the manager, and the fans start changing. All of them teams do not want to play us. Um, you know, they're looking at us going, shit, we've got Newcastle. No one wants to play us. We are an awful team to play against in terms of football, in terms of aggressiveness. So, yeah, I agree. But, you know, me now as a fan, I don't look at that fixture list now with fear. I look at every game, game by game, and go, right, we're going to give these a game. And that's the manager's changed that mentality in me as a fan. Um, you know, under Steve Bruce, I used to just dread it. Absolutely dread every game. Dread Burnley at home because I knew we'd lose. So now, as a fan, it's, it's great to look at the fixture list and go, great. And I think, I think you mentioned at the start of the show, 
fan expectation is a massive thing. If we don't start the season great, stick behind the team. You know, yeah. there is the potential we could lose three out of the first five or six games because of how we're playing. Because of how we play football, I think we're going to be a bit more open at the back this season because I think we're going to attack more. Stick behind Eddie Howe, trust him what he's trying to do. Um, I think if, we, if we're sat with six points in the Champions League and sat nine for ten, it's, it's not a bad start of the season because teams have figured out how to play against us as well. It's, you know, you're talking about playing 15, 16 minutes of added time now at games, which is going to be absolutely ridiculous. We're not allowed to game Man, um, we're not allowed any game management anymore, which we've been excellent at. People say it's the dark arts. It's not it's game management being part of football for. Well, Tindall's not allowed up at the dugout anymore. You know, I was watching the unwashed yesterday, 13 minutes added on, and no, nothing happened in that half, but a couple of injuries. So, yeah, that's going to spoil it as well. But, yeah, no one's going to look forward to playing Newcastle this season, and rightly so. You know, hopefully we can we can take more points off, off teams than we did, you know, last year, and we finished third last year. Fourth, sorry. So, yeah, I'm not really concerned about the fixture list because I think we're going to be the, one of the worst teams to play this season. I do agree. Teams should fear us because we are, you know, top four. We've got a cup final. We play attacking football. And then, obviously, uh, as you say, the fixture list, which is a lot of them are on Sky. Uh, when you get it in September, you know, you're having two games a week now and you might have a... There's a couple of them where there's a way game in the Champions League and then another way game, uh, which will be... In, in the Premier League, so no doubt, I mean Adam will be clocking the miles up wherever that will be across the across Europe. But um, you, you talked about um, the dark art a little bit. It's a great point. So, Mr. Phillips, I'll come to you. What do you reckon with this whole Jason Tindall? I mean, we've seen it over the weekend. He was kind of hovering, wasn't he? Um, he? He didn't come all the way out when Eddie Howe was there, but he was kind of like he was just hovering and like I think he got told off on the Saturday. But apart from that, do you think this is petty? Was that for me? Sorry, or, or Adam? Just, uh, Adam P. Oh, for me. Okay, well, um, yeah, well, Jason Tindall, it's definitely something that I got used to. I think the rules came in quite literally just for him because I thought he's probably the worst offender in terms of coming into the box. He constantly talks to the fourth official, he likes getting in the face of the opposition manager. He's someone that I think game management, again, as you said before from Adam, um, Newcastle were the best to do and I think we were quite smart how we did it. I think that rules quite literally came for him. Um, I, I can't think of anyone else that I would actually came in for. Now, I want to touch on the added time briefly, the all new rule that's came. And I actually think, um, maybe an unpopular opinion, but I actually think it will somewhat benefit the castle because, one, I think we're the fittest team in the league or one of the fittest teams in the league. I think the players will be ready to go. On. And, um, I mean, I think this rule would benefit the better teams. I think teams like Man City, for example, they've got all these subs on the bench, you've got this real quality. I think for the, the teams that have just came up mid tier teams trying to scrape for a point or even three points, They'll just capitulate in the, the 10 to 15 minutes added time. So I think, honestly, for Newcastle, there'll be some exceptions, but I think all round, this new added time thing will actually benefit us somewhat. I think Newcastle will enjoy more added time, and I think we do have quite a fit squad. So I don't think it's that bad. But as for all the Jason Tindall stuff in the technical area, I think that's something that's definitely going to play a bigger part for us. And, uh, yeah, he's going to have to get used to that because I think Tindall definitely is someone that, um, that's going to get taught off a lot this season for that rule. But... Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know why it's been brought in. To be honest, I don't. I don't really get what it's in for. I order to try and penalise Newcastle somewhat. Yeah, I'd, like, I'd love to see who's making all these rules up. There's a new rule where you're not allowed to use a towel to dry the ball. Like, is, yeah. is, is football in that much of a farce that there's that little petty rules? You know, but like, like the, the, didn't, the, didn't they bring that in for like Rory Delap and then it just disappeared? But so what if you can't defend a corner because someone's dried the ball and you shouldn't be playing football at the end of the day? It's it's the rules. The good. It's end up going to spoil the game because as Adam mentioned. 13, 14 minutes. If you're Luton Town, for example, and you've got Man City at home, you've grafted your arse off for 90 minutes to get a point. And yes, time wasted. It's part of the game. It's always been part of the game. And if you're Man City and you can't break Luton down over 90 minutes, that's your fault. It's not because they've wasted time. I could go on all day because it really winds me up in terms of how they're bowing down to these, these big teams. Um, in terms of, oh, we want to play extra football. Ten Hag was the same. Getting in the referee's head before the cup final. Um, it really, really riles us when you know it's football. It's over ninety minutes, and if you yeah, yeah. usually have five or six minutes at the end, if you can't score in that, it's tough. But yeah, it's going to spoil the game for me. Yeah, well, um, we'll move on to uh, we've got a, a couple of um, messages here off Callum. Uh, Callum says I had twelve son, um, so I can't uh, wait to see Newcastle United in the Champions League. I believe Newcastle will get through the last sixteen. Um, doesn't matter who we get, then Mr. Adam Adam P. Um, are you confident Newcastle will get in the top two regardless who the draw? 
Well, I'm not entirely sure top two, but I definitely think top three. So I think we will continue European football after the group stage. I think the likeliness of us finishing fourth, it does depend on the group. I will say there's a high or even a decent chance we might get the group of death. But even then, I still think the large majority of teams, especially at St. James' Pot, I think we can take on anyone. I really think we can. Even a team like Atletico Madrid, for example, I think we could give a game with St. James. I know there's some exceptions like the PSG with Madrid. I don't think are, are realistic in the sense of playing a team like Real. But I do definitely think we can take on anyone. I think we can give it a good go. And uh, even if we finish third and end up in the Europa League, I still don't think it's a disaster because then you've got a more realistic chance of winning the entire thing and that puts you back into the Champions League regardless of your league form. So... It's a balance again. It depends what Newcastle want to do. I think, obviously, for us, Newcastle will push on and try and win the Champions League, even though it's not realistic. Uh, I think you definitely will try and go as far as possible. It depends on fixtures in the group stage. Uh, that's the only thing I can say, really. But I do think we can take on more or less anyone. I think that's the most important part. Newcastle will back the Champions League, but we aren't one of the worst teams. I definitely think we're a team that's going to be in the middle, someone that's good enough to take on anyone, but obviously not good enough to win the full thing. I want the group of death. I want it, mate. Yeah. I think we're, if we can test ourselves against the best, worst case scenario, I think we could finish third. And then, you, as you say, have that Europa League. You win the Europa League, you're back in. Do you know what I mean? And then the whole con- the coefficiency changes, I think, into the back end of next season, I think, where the top two leagues will get fifth place, which is going to be, at the moment, La Liga and the Premier League as well. So, um, last question to you, Mr Phillips. Do you think Newcastle can go for in the Champions League or is it just a case of get the knockout round and see, see we draw? I think it's more important to enjoy the experience, um, fans and players. It's been that long since we've been in the Champions League. Um, just enjoy it. Enjoy who we get. As I said, if we get the group of death, we get the group of death. St. James's Park is going to be an awful place for any away team in the Champions League to come to. Um, I think we can really get six points at home and away, away win, nine, which should probably see us finish second or third. Um, so... We're not going to win it, you know. Let's let's be realistic. It's a, it's all about progressing as far as you can, um, and if that means, as Adam says, if that means we then finish third and have to progress in the Europa League, so be it. It's a much better position than we were in two years ago. This isn't all. Even if we don't finish top four this season, it's not going to be the last time we're in the Champions League. You know, the club's going the right direction. So just, I just urge every fan just to enjoy the Tuesday or Wednesday nights. Everyone who goes to away games in Europe enjoy it, because you know. It's been a long, long time since fans have been able to go away in Europe. And it's, you know, I've, I've been to one in the Europa League when Pardew was in charge over Bruges. And I'll never forget that, the, you know, the day I die. So it's, it's, it's moments like that for fans I think we need to embrace and, you know, not get too frustrated if, it, you know, we're not in the Champions League final. Uh, Dom, we're not having that. We're not winning the Champions League. Didn't be daft. And our Leicester have won the Premier League and stranger things have happened. But, um, yeah, your night out away in Bruges. Do you, remember, do you actually remember it? I do. We travelled that much. I didn't have a chance to have much to drink. But uh, I remember travelling that far, the stress of it all, actually getting to the ground. The police were awful and we were 2 0 down after 10 minutes. Was, was like, that the game Vernon and Eat scored that worldie? Vernon and Eat scored a worldie. I'm sure it was either Shola, Shola or Sammy equalised. Hi. Um, I was sat with the Bruce fans. It was weird. You couldn't, you couldn't react because they were a bit naughty. Um, but I was, I'll never forget <laughs> that. It was great. Yeah, interesting to see if um, Adam, if you do any undercover videos and some oh, we get somewhere in, uh, somewhere in Turkey or anything like that, because you're on your own, mate. I'm not coming. Um, Italy would be the worst for that. Napoli, Italy, Milan, anything like that. I think I'm in big trouble. But uh, it's Wait, gonna be the best this. You don't want Napoli. Napoli's an awful. You don't want. We yeah, don't want he didn't get run wearing the black and white top, especially in Rome. The Romans as well. Um, just be careful of Lazio uh, with the Romans as well, because uh, yeah. Uh, there's been a few um, stuff over the years with the English fans but yeah we'll wrap up there so um, Mr Pearson thank you very much for popping on pal Um, Andrew earlier on to this evening and Mr Phillips as well a couple of hiccups that's just because we broadband drop down I've seen that drop down a couple of times so that's my fault Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the show Uh, we'll continue this on a weekly basis as well and if you haven't subscribed I mean do I need to promote Adam do I need to promote him that way that way that way that way (laughs) is that way Go on, you might as well. Go on, Adam. Promote yourself. People somehow don't know who you are. Yeah. Where can people find you? Well, uh, it's just my name, Adam Pearson, on YouTube. I've got all the games, all the women's matches. So it's uh, busy, stressful. I'm still jet lagged, but I'm back with the girls on Wednesday. And then we've got the Premier League back on Saturday. So I can't wait for it. Like, I'm sure I'm going to see it all the games. <laughs> I do I, 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 I see him. I see him more than my family. I do, honestly. 
I reckon Adam's going to be on Love Island next year. There's a prediction. I tell you, that's how far he's going. <laughs> Especially if only fans women keep replying to him, doesn't he? <laughs> that's quite bad, actually. He'll probably be whacked him. Yeah, you're getting all these only fans lasses that want to win a PC, Adam. Uh, but uh, it's good crack. It's good crack. Uh, Twitter, you're funny on it. But yeah, we'll wrap up there. Thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll do more and more lives uh, as we get used to this new system because we're still, um, like I say, a couple of teething issues. But yeah, thank you very much, um, Adam, both Adams and Andrew. Have a good night, everyone. Watch what they're doing. Bye bye.